In this lesson, we are going to focus on defining matter and classifying matter, matter based on composition, otherwise known as classifying matter. So uh, in Schoology, you will find a set of notes that you can use. Uh, they are in Cornell format, but you do not need to do, uh, do anything other than fill them in. Um, and this is classifying matter and particles is the topic for this particular um, set of notes. Um, once again, these notes are your notes. You're not going to be turning them in, but they are good to have, so you can use them later on on tests and quizzes. So chemistry um, is the study of matter, describing it and talking about how matter changes. So the first question we have is, what is matter? Well, matter is everything around us except for energy. So we can think of it as the stuff around us, anything that has mass and volume, so in other words, weighs something, takes up some space, and or anything that is made of particles. So in short, you can think of matter as being stuff. Now, scientists can go ahead and classify matter. They can classify it in different ways. One way that they can classify it is based on the makeup of the particles. And when they do that, they break it down into two different categories, substances and mixtures. So if I look at something that is um, some matter and it is a substance, that means that it's made of only one kind of particle. So if I blew the matter up to the uh, atomic level, to the mic microscopic, submicroscopic level, we would see that all, everything in the matter is made of just one kind of particle. All the particles would look the same, okay? Something that is a substance is very hard to separate. Those particles are hard to, take, to separate from one another because they have very strong attractions between them. Mixtures, on the other hand, are made of two or more kinds of particles. So again, if you blew them up, you would be able to tell the difference. Oh, that's one kind of particle, that's a different kind of particle. And so in a mixture, things are just simply mixed. There's weaker attractions between them, so they're easier to separate from one another. Okay. Furthermore, each of these can be broken down into even smaller categories. Substances can be broken down into either elements or compounds. If some, a substance is an element, those particles that it's made of are made of only one kind of atom. So one kind of particle, one kind of atom. Okay. If something is a compound, that one kind of particle is actually made of two or more atoms, kinds of atoms, stuck together, or as we like to say, bonded. Right. So a few more things about elements. One, uh, where do we find names of elements? We find that on the periodic table. And so examples of these would be things like mercury or sulfur or lead. Okay. Compounds, again, made of two or more kinds of atoms combined, are combinations of things on the, on the periodic table. A hint that we have for them would be things like uh, or that they have formulas. So things like NaCl has a formula. It is salt. Ca6H12O6, it's got a formula. It's sugar. Okay, so again, single kinds of particles, but they're made of atom, more than one kind of atom stuck together. Okay. Mixtures can be separated into a couple of different categories as well. Homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures. If we talk about these prefixes, homo means same, hetero means different, okay? So in a homogeneous mixture, it looks the same throughout. So it's different particles mixed together. At the microscopic level, you could tell the difference between the particles. But when you, <clears throat> when you put them all together and look at them at the human scale with our eyes, it looks the same throughout. We also call homogeneous mixtures solutions. In a heterogeneous mixture, you can see the distinct parts at the human level. So again, you go down to the microscopic level, you can see the distinct different, uh, one kind of particle, different kind of particle. And when you get to a human scale, you can still say, oh, there's that kind of particles and there's a group of those kinds of particles. And why is that? Well, it has to do with how the particles are arranged. In a homogeneous mixture, the particles are evenly mixed. And so because you're, they're evenly mixed, at the human scale, we can't tell the difference between them. So examples of this would be like chocolate milk or jewelry that's made out of sterling silver, which is silver and some other metals mixed in. We can't tell if I look at the chocolate milk, what are the milk particles and what are the chocolate particles. 
In a heterogeneous mixture, you can see the distinct parts. Why? Because particles that are the same as each other, or like particles, get clumped together. So for example, an apple. I can see the particles that are clumped together to make, this, make the seeds, to make the fruit, to make the skin. In a book, I can see the particles that are clumped together in the ink particles to make the letters. I can see the paper particles. I can see the cover particles. Um, some soup, okay? I can see the wild rice particles, the broth particles, but they're very distinct from one another. It is a heterogeneous mixture. All right, so if I'm walking down the street and I want to run into some matter and I want to know what it is, here are the ways that I can tell the difference between them, okay? So first one is an element, okay? Elements look the same throughout, but we'll find their names on a periodic table. Compounds, again, look the same throughout, but they only have one ingredient and an ingredient has a formula. If something is a mixture, there are gonna be many ingredients, okay? If it's homogeneous, it looks like one thing. If it's heterogeneous, it looks like you can see the separate ingredients, okay? So these are one ingredient. These have more than one thing or more than one ingredient in them because they are mixtures. Okay, this runs us through the same ideas except for it gives us the things as a, at a uh, particle level. So matter can be broken down into substances and mixtures. In a substance, you have just one kind of particle. In an element, that one kind of particle is made of one kind of atom. Whereas in a compound, it's made of more than one kind of atom stuck together. So one particle, one atom, one particle, more than one kind of atom. On the mixture side, we have more than one kind of atom or particle, or in other words, more than one kind of particle. In the homogeneous mixture, those are evenly mixed, and so there's uniform composition, and we can't tell the differences between them. In a heterogeneous mixture, things are clumped up together. Here's all the sand clumped together. Here's all the water clumped together. So I can see the sand particles in a heterogeneous mixture. It does not look like one thing altogether. All right, so here are your assignments. First of all, there is a classifying matter activity, which is going to ask you to look at a bunch of different uh, substances and particles and classify them and give them a... Um, uh, and classify them and figure out what they are and give a reason for why you classified them that way. Then you're also going to find a mixtures reading, okay? And you're going to go ahead and read that and mark it up. And then last but not least, you are going to go ahead and you are going to um, take the mixtures reading quiz. Okay, mixtures reading quiz. This you can take an unlimited amounts of, amount of times um, and you can keep trying to get a better score with that. That's your work for today. Thanks.